Okay, now as you can see, um, I have secured the, the back side or where, where my dummy lights are with uh, scotch tape because it's clear. And then I, then I put my tabs back over. You see the little little round tabs? I put it back over the back side so that the paint would not actually get on the, the indicators. Now what I'm going to do is take this, uh, this white primer. It's a... Uh, it's a brush-on primer, and basically the white primer is to seal the black paint on the back side of my bezel here, so that if it gets scratched, it's not visible through the plexiglass. You don't need to really apply it too thick. You just want to uh, to seal your black paint. This might take about an hour to dry completely. Another thing is uh, paint, paint around your dummy lights so that the, the primer will actually secure your, uh, your lights or your, your plastics for your lights to the, uh, the plexiglass here. Scotch tape was just basically to hold them in place after I got them straightened out. Another thing that this primer is good for is it reflects any additional light. So you don't have any light coming through your black paint um, from your indicator lights here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take my little put screen apart to remove these buttons. Okay, um, when Windows boots up, it automatically turns on the screen. So really, the power button it, it kind of protrudes a little bit, and I don't want the plexiglass to actually actuate the button or to mess with my uh, controls for my my brightness. So I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to remove those buttons. Okay, so I have removed the buttons. And I am still waiting for my primer to dry around my the back side of my my new screen cover slash bezel. Um, my hope is when I am completely done with this, when I have everything turned off, it'll be a solid black uh, just piece. So you will never actually know that there was a screen there, you just see darkness. Um, when the screen comes on, of course, it'll shine straight through the plexiglass, and I also have another layer of protection, and it'll look great. Okay, so I have removed the uh, protective layer. has a couple touch-ups, but not bad. And as you can see, my, uh, my indicators are right there. my blinkers, my service engine, and I also have a clear window to where I can see my screen. Should be like right there. Okay, to, to further enforce uh, my paint job, on, on the back side here, uh, whilst the, the primer is still wet, I added masking tape. Um, you don't want to pat it down too hard, you just want to put it on there uh, to get your lines nice and even. Of course you don't want to cover up your indicators. And that is basically to reinforce things so that you don't run the chance of uh, scratching your paint on the back side. Now, as you can see, it needs to be cleaned and wiped up a little bit, but I have a perfect bezel with indicator lights to go around my uh, seven inch Lilliput here. And here in a minute I'm going to install it and sh shoot another video 
Um, not exactly the simplest of projects. You just have to be careful when you're routering this, uh, this eighth inch plexiglass that it doesn't crack. Uh, so you have to take it nice and slow and not, uh, not try to uh, rush the process. But as you can see, again, the, the indicators are completely visible. They're colored the way they're supposed to be, and I have a nice straight edge for my screen. Okay, so here's what I have so far. Got my indicator lights. Um, later on, I'm going to, I might, I might possibly wire LEDs to the back of those, but they're pretty much right over where my blinkers and my check engine light and everything is supposed to go. So I, I'm assuming that they will, they will work just fine. Um, I do need to wash it off a little bit, but once once I'm done, I'll get all the fingerprints and everything off. Um, yeah, so as you can see, just a little bit of work. I mean, honestly, this, is, this only cost me about five bucks to make this bezel, and the screen itself was about eighty-four dollars on Amazon. Okay, honestly, I couldn't be more pleased with how this has turned out. Now I, I have my uh, my plastic to put on there. Everything's nice and shiny. Um, I did kind of cut off my engine light a little bit up there, but it's still you can still read what it says. And reason being is I, I had to put it like right above where the screen was, so I couldn't really get around that. But I do have my blinkers now. I have a nice shiny bezel that goes over it my indiglo gauges and it looks pretty damn good okay uh, as you can see I have it installed in the car blinkers are working and I didn't have to do the LED thing like I thought I was there's enough light back there to actually emit through the blinker and then up here I have my check engine light and as you can see, all the gauges are working. And that is how you uh, you make your LCD bezel. Go a little do a little click through here. See my mouse pointer. Uh, this isn't a touch screen. Of course, this one is. But this one isn't a touch screen, and I, I have my dash command. And I can go in and uh, select different skins. Here's one right here that I've actually uh, designed myself. Give it a little bit more of a Mitsubishi twist. I have my uh, temperature here, my battery my uh, average fuel economy and my current fuel economy. I'm going to be adding some more gauges to that uh, later on. But everything looks smooth and is uh, ready to go. Heck yeah. So I hope you uh, have enjoyed my how to install a LCD screen instead of your digital gauges. Uh, I do need to remind you that you have to have a PC installed in your car and you need an Elm 327 OBD2 interface with uh, Dash Command software. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed and you got information out of my video.